and go, I think a lot of us sometimes, we don't fall in love with the right thing. The achievement we're talking about, right? We love the achievement, the peak of the mountains, and it'd be so amazing. If you think about people who are climbing mountains, how much time do they spend on the peak versus the climb? Mm. This is the Cumin Bell Show. Let's just go on and spill the tea. This is one of the realest persons I've ever met. My mission is to encourage every single woman. We're here to lift y'all up. There's no one more effective than moms. You mess with the bull, you gonna get the horns. I need coffee, I need Jesus, and I need therapy. (laughs) (laughs) If you can bring a smile to people's faces, why would you not? True confidence is knowing who you are and why you're here. Hey, y'all, this is the Kim Gravel Show, and this season we are leveling up your life, and we're stepping in to your purpose, and we're going to do that together. Uh, Today is a day to really level up, Zach. I mean, we have one of my new favorite people. I say this a lot about this gentleman, Anthony Trucks, former NFL player. His mission is really to teach others how to make that shift, make shift happen in your life. Um. Zach, you're going to be just your your socks are going to be blessed off by this guy. Uh, I I think <laughs> I just love makeshift happened so much. You like, love it because it's almost that, inappropriate. It's almost inappropriate, but it is ready for it's like time. saying a cuss word and getting away with it, <laughs> right? Yeah, but no. For me, it's funny because I think that athletes in particular have this mindset that when they're able to be really articulate what makes them like, not everyone, obviously not everyone can get to the level of being in the NFL. You have to have something about you to even get to that level. And I think when you find someone who's able to really like lay that out and lay that bare, you know, and, and then take it 10 steps further, which Anthony seems like he has, um, I'm really excited to meet him. You're going to love him. He's got a word for all of us. It, it, the whole season of this season of Kim Gravel show is to really help people see a different uh, path for themselves, a purpose for themselves, a new leash on life. Um, that's why I wrote the book Collecting Confidence, because I want people to really step in to their calling in life. And Anthony really can give you some practical ways to do that. So when we come back, we've got Anthony who is going to show us how to make shift happen right after this. I just want to say a big thank you to everybody who's reached out to me about uh, the book Collecting Confidence, my new book that has just been such a blessing to hear from you. Um, it's been a bestseller, and it's and more importantly, it's the messages I'm getting that it's touched your life is really <laughs> you you have no idea. That is true success to me. If you've taken anything, any nugget, any truth out of that book and applied it and, and related to it in your own life, I say thank you. Um, Zach, it's just been so amazing to hear people say to me, Kim, this book touched me. Mm. That's why I did it, is that I want everyone to walk in their collected confidence. So you can start where you are and become everything you're meant to be. Doesn't matter your age. Doesn't matter um, what you look like, where you come from. Confidence is right there for you and can be everything. Help you be everything you're meant to be. Thank y'all. I love you. All right, everybody. I have got a guest on today. He's probably one of my new favorite people. He's a new friend. Um, I was on his podcast promoting my uh, new book, Collecting Confidence, and I just think he is the coolest. It's Anthony Trucks. He's a former NFL athlete who lost his career to a shoulder injury. Three-time American Ninja Warrior on NBC. Okay, well, I'm already exhausted just reading those two things. (laughs) International speaker. He's um, the host of the All Shift podcast. I love, he talks about identity shift and how to upgrade how you operate to elevate your life founder of Identity Shift Coaching, and his life mission is to teach others how to make shift happen. Y'all welcome Anthony Trucks to the Kim Gravel Show. Anthony Trucks. That's cool. Who did that? I like that. We got to get, I got to get one of those things done. You, like I, you got it. I want, my, I want my wife to hit that. So when I walk in the, when I walk in the room, 
That'd be nice for now. Uh, <laughs> Anthony, you're one of my new favorite people. Did you know that? I'm going to have to tell I you why. Now. I appreciate yeah, it. You are. You are too cool for school. But honestly, um, after starting following you and, and talking with you and just watching what you're doing with your career, which is on the rise, um, you've got a fantastic story. I had no idea mm. the things that you had been through. I mean, you've been in the foster care system, adopted at 14. Yeah. Um, you you had such a blessed career to go in the NFL and then had this shoulder and this random shoulder injury. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You've got to just start by telling the audience who you are, your background a little bit before we get into making shift happen. You know, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. we'll give, we'll give the, the reader's digest. For those who know what that is. Do it, do it. Cause I'm here. just fascinated. I'm fascinated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a man of, uh, I'm a man of God. I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I am a, a coach, a speaker, a teacher, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, but it comes from a life where I believe I, I think it's about humanity. You shouldn't be telling people how to run the race until you've crossed some finish lines. Come on. And so, in life, I find that I've crossed some finish lines I choose to now talk about. I went through it up and down in my marriage, but it all goes back to me being a kid, three years old, given away into the foster care system, like you'd mentioned, uh, adopted at 14 after 11 years in the system by an all-white family, very poor. So I had a lot of weird dynamics of who am I, where I fit, how do I exist? Mm. Which I think we all as human beings have those questions either consciously or subconsciously. Sure. They drive our actions. And then I wanted to be something. I didn't want to be another statistic of foster care. We don't graduate from college. A lot of us end up homeless. And so uh, I just, I beat some odds. I had like a lot of great love in my life. And I ended up becoming this person that tried this a, a action towards a, a game I wasn't good at in the beginning, but I learned how to get good, which was wow. football. I loved hitting people, not getting in trouble. I'm not going to say that wasn't a fun <laughs> part of it. Um, oh, that sounds like even, something I'd like to do. Yes. Oh, I, can, I, I can relate. Any ideas, people. Kim? All right. I'm glad that I'm not in Atlanta. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I find people all the time at gas stations and on the street. I have, I have found myself having to talk myself out of throwing quarters out of my windows lately because people would cut me off like crazy men. <laughs> real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. One one time I was I was like I was someone cut me off bad and like mm. I couldn't turn off the lizard brain and I started reaching for for like the chain my wife had to grab my hand and pull it out of the chain <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mother. you know yeah but everybody can relate to that Anthony everybody listening is like uh yeah I mean I'm not really gonna do it but I want to I want to think I am you know I want to at least Correct. be worried about. It. I love uh, it. So no, I, I got a I got a chance to play football in high school. Got really good. Got a college scholarship. Uh, and played uh, at the Division One level of University of Oregon. Did my thing. Had a kid at 20 years old. Uh, had my wow. met my father at 20 years old. My biological dad for the first time. Wow. And then from there progressed on to to marry my high school sweetheart. Play in the NFL. Lose my career like you mentioned. Came home. Had two more kids. Lost my complete sense of identity. Didn't know who I was without the game of football. Blew my life up. Got divorced because wife had an affair and it all went psycho and sideways. And then fast forward three years. I had a lot of darkness. I called the dark times and I did what I call as dark work to figure out who I was, to elevate my identity to a man that I could be proud of. That I would want my kids to be like my daughter to, to marry a man like me someday kind of. And so it allowed me to then cross some finish lines. And so I learned that over, over the years of my life, I'd always navigated these windows of time to progress. And I call it the dark work you do so you can shine mm-hmm. the light. That the light is the, the shift of your identity. And so that's where I've come to now. I've come to the point where I've gone through some some craziness. I've actually since remarried my ex-wife. We have an amazing marriage. We're about almost what? seven years deep in the wow. remarriage. And it's it's a beautiful life. So no complaints from me at this point in life. I've I've I got a lot of peace because I had a lot of hardship. You talk about this dark work. What does that mean? I think I know what that means, but what yeah. do you mean by doing the dark work? So the dark work, there's a concept called shadow work and shadow work is, is the work you do to figure out what's going on in the shadows that you don't see that is responsible Mm. for the life you do see. Right. So maybe you just, you don't realize that you keep dating the same guy with a different name, you know, (laughs) or you you keep getting the same job that you hate. Like these things happen. You go, why is it going on? Well, shadow work uncovers it. The dark work is what you do now that you know. Ooh. That's a separator for a lot of people because they'll know about it, but we don't do that stuff. But it's it's the thing where I've, I deposit, I call it dark work, deposit the daily work I do in the direction of my dream. Because when you get to the point of having this dream later on, it, for me, I tie it to identity with this concept. You can't have a dream above your current identity. 
how mm. I how I see myself currently will lead to actions I take and the actions create the outcome. If I don't identify with the actions that have that dream, I don't do them. I don't have it. So the dark work is the actions you do to eventually become that. So you can have the dream, the house, the car, the joy, the peace, the whatever you want. And so the dark work, I, I, it allows you to have this ability to what I say is shine in the light later on. Where do you find the motivation? I, 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 Cause I totally a thousand percent agree with everything you're saying. Mm-hmm. Where do we find the motivation in those times, in those dark times? Because that seems to be like a reoccurring thing, not only in my own life, but for so many people I talk to. How do I get motivated to change the actions, Anthony? Yeah, well, it's an interesting thing. I think there's two ways. You push, you pull, right? The, The pushing is kind of the thing where I go, all right, if I look at the life I'm living, uh, like when I was 15, I did dark work mm-hmm. back then. Cause like, I want to be a great football player. Cause it also allows you to have this sense of, I call it dark work mentality. It's tied to a dominator's identity, which is I've done too much work in the dark to lose in the light. Come on with it. You need to say that again. You need to yeah, repeat I, that. I'm back in my shirt. I can turn around and show it to you. It says I'm I serious. Have done too much work in the dark to lose in the light. Yes. It's a, it's a, ment- it's a guttural mentality that I need you to have in the moments that'll define your life. But you build that, right? And so for me, I look at different parts of my life where I've, I've gone back and I've done that. And so the motivation comes from one of two places. For me, it comes from one place, which is I don't want to go where the end of this road I'm on is headed. Right. No matter what it is, how it's going, I can look at my life and go, if I extrapolate this to place I land, I don't want to be there. So you know what? I don't know for sure that if I go somewhere else, it's going to be great, but I do know I don't want to go where this is going. So when I right. was a kid... People go, well, how'd you believe you're going to be great at football and play in the NFL one day and start doing this work? And I go, oh, you got to misconstrued. I didn't believe that at all. (laughs) They go, well, why did you get started? I go, I just believed that the place I was headed, I didn't want to go. It was the first part of the motivation. I don't want to get stuck in this place. The second part goes, can I craft a dream that is one inch out of control? Come on. (laughs) What answer is a little scare you to death? (laughs) I know it should be just like that little. Just make that, that butt pucker a little bit, just a little bit of like hope, you know. <laughs> but the idea was, I guess for me, when I look at all these things, like there's a place where I go, I want to have this idea that is one inch out of control. Meaning if it's just the level where I go, I can do that. It doesn't excite us sometimes, right? But if it's one inch, which goes, mm-hmm. you know what? I don't, I don't know for sure, but like it's so close, it could be possible. Right. And so I, I like to set dreams that are like that one inch out of the normal, not 17 yards, Right. A single inch. And then what happens, I get a little bit of excitement, like, man, it's it's close enough to touch, but it's just still like, I don't quite know. And then what happens, you start putting yourself in the direction to do those things. And you start finding, oh, wow, I set it for an inch, but I could actually go 17 yards. But you mm-hmm. wouldn't have gone a path in the first place if you didn't get started. So the motivation for me comes from that. And then here's one key that I want people to grasp. You okay. do not identify with the outcomes. People all the time, they, they want to- That I is so true. Like, you know, I go, can I, am I the person that does this? And if you, if you compare yourself to the outcome in the beginning of the journey, you will never have the, the joy or even think you can do it because you're always comparing going, I suck at this. So I recommend you literally identify with the efforts. Am I the oh. person that gives the efforts in the direction? Because if I can say, you know what? I am the kind of person that gives the effort. Well, then someday I can do this thing, whatever it is. I want to sure. be a pilot. I want to fly a plane. There's a, a little airport nearby. I go, why not? Right. I've never flown in a plane besides one, something else. I've never done that, but I go, well, something else can do. It's one inch out of control, but I go, well, what does it look like to take the steps? First thing is take an opening flight. You get in the cockpit, you do it. Next thing I know, I'm like, oh, I can do this. And it's, it's just taking that next little step. And for me, all I want to do is identify with the effort of showing up, doing the stuff. And if you can just do that, I go, you know what? I'm not an amazing pilot now, but I did the efforts that are necessary for me today. The more you do it, the more you get that positive feel. And then all of a sudden you're flying, right? That's going to be the journey that I'll go down. But that's the same for everybody's journey for life. You know, it sounds like you're like saying, like, build that faith muscle. Take that one step, Mm -hmm. push yourself a little bit. And where does accomplishment come into all of that? Because I truly Mm -hmm. believe as we're taking those steps and we're making those little accomplishments, that gives us confidence. And is that what you're talking about? Like. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it for sure. It's, it's kind of wrapped up in two pieces because one of it is I need to take unconfident action to create confidence. All right. So you do have to do things because it, it gives you the feedback that tells you whether you should or shouldn't be confident. Is every single action going to be great? Absolutely not. But a collection of them in the direction of something that you want to do 
statistically, by the sheer law of average, will give you some positives. You're going to go, okay, I'm going to have some wins. I develop little by little the confidence there, right? And so the achievement makes me feel better. But I also think there's a way that I look at, uh, I'm a very metaphorical human. I think I'm like pictures and stuff. And I go, I think a lot of us sometimes, we don't fall in love with the right thing. The achievement we're talking about, right? We love the achievement, the peak of the mountains. And it'd be so amazing. If you think about people who are climbing mountains, how much time do they spend on the peak versus the climb? Mm. vastly mm. more on the climb. And so for me, I go, yeah. well, if I can just fall in love with the day, not just the destination, well, then I'll actually have a lot more peace, a lot more joy in the journey. How do you do that though, Anthony? Yeah, yeah. You you find the monotony and you find the nuance within it that gives you joy. Here's an example. Uh, my wife owns properties for our businesses we have nearby. And so if one's for like some for her work for her company she owns, I'm the handyman, right? I go fix things. I grew up really poor, so you can't go call somebody. You better figure it out yourself. So I got I'm like, <laughs> work right, it I'm yourself. Like, You'd be surprised at the things I can fix. And I could put a car stereo in your car right now. Like I'm, I'm oh creepy good God. at that. <laughs> it's serious. You want I love it. Put the amp in there, TV screen. Anyway, so I learned that for me, like I don't like to break my day because I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. I work with companies like Amazon yeah. and PayPal. Like I'm working. So to go and do like that work, it's like I don't want to, but. But I'm her husband, right? So I go, okay, I'm going to go do this. And I go, I don't want to go do it. But what I try to find out is like, hey, what within this can I enjoy? And I find, well, you know what? I love my wife. I get to talk to her the whole mm-hmm. ride in of a conversation. Or I go, you know what? I got to go and like fix this fence. What can I do? Is an album I found. I wanted to listen to this album. Let's, let's pl- hit play. Let me listen to this album, right? I find joy in the music. So I, I actively am seeking to find the thing that I can have joy within the thing I don't enjoy. The brain will find what you set it towards. If you find and seek to find all why you don't want to do it, it's going to suck. Yeah, you'll find that 100%, no problem. But if you set the brain to go find something positive, you'll find it. And so little nuances like that, they give me a a way to fall in love with this day. And I know that that day leads me to a destination of a great marriage, of a sound household, Mm. of a a better business for her, right? Those, Those are the things of the destinations, but we're loving the day every day. Well, you, you talk about making shift happen. Um, when you say shift, are you t- are you thinking mindset? What what shift are you talking mm, about? Identity shift. But the shift is also if you remove the F, that's what it is. Like I want you to do that. All right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that, that the moment of elation. Like I'm trying to get some. It, it's like the moment where like you all of a sudden have this overwhelming like welling up of joy. And, like it's just got to ah, got to come out. Right? Don't don't that, we want that? We all want that. So you want to have that moment happen. You have to do things differently. You have to shift your identity. And so for me, I look at our, I'm not talking about change who you are. I I don't need you to wake up tomorrow and all of a sudden start wearing like, you know, hats and glasses and wearing different shoes. Like you don't got to be a whole new human and start dancing, right? However, you can make small shifts. Maybe you wake up in the morning and make a small shift to your morning routine. Uh, You make a small shift to your optimism. Maybe before you go into work in a place you don't want to work, you tell yourself, you know what? Today I'm gonna I'm gonna identify with three words: joy, communication, and and happiness. Right? What I'm gonna say that and you say it to yourself. These small little shifts. Well, you step into new experiences of life, and they teach you something different because you're seeing it and feeling it, and your whole framing is actually different. And that's really what an identity shift is over time. The way that I look at it is, we think about identity. We'll take it back from this philosophical, right? At a neurological and psychological level, we are wired. If me and you had an experience in life and something wired us right, maybe a dog bit you and didn't bite me. If you see a dog, you have a wiring for like, oh my gosh, a dog, right? I want to get away. And Correct. someone else might go, oh, sweet, a dog, right? Well, that wiring is what allows you to take actions. That's creating your life. Now, the only way we got there was because of an experience. So what I go is, well, if I want to be someone different, different identity, different light, you know, it shines differently in the light, I must have different experiences. And we only do in one of two ways. On demand or when crap hits the fan. And most of the time, <laughs> people wait until crap hits the fan. Like, I got bills to pay and my wife's leaving me. Like, now you change? You couldn't do it before? You got, you got, you got to pick it up. Yeah, you got to pick up the pace. Yeah, yep. so, so I say do it on demand. Make some choices and step into, like the, I just said, take these small shifts. Step into your life intentionally. Do something a little bit that's different, right? But the more you do it, you get a new experience. All of a sudden, Bob in accounting likes you because you're being nice to Bob. And then Bob recommends you for something else. And oh my gosh, now you have a new career, a new job, and you have new experiences. And if you go, gosh, I, I am awesome. I am better than I, than I thought I was two years ago, three years ago. But you had to do those little shifts in the beginning to wire yourself through the experiences. 
Well, and I think everything starts with an intention. When you said that that word earlier, it, it triggered something in my head because it's the why we're doing things that are so important. How much about how much of this is about setting that intention? Because, uh, you know, just because like, even like weight loss, Anthony, like I want to lose weight. Well, that's not necessarily an intention, right? You know, I'm like, it doesn't motivate me to get up and like put down the ice cream or get, you know, put my running shoes on and go walk a brisk walk. How can we better set our intentions? Yeah. So I I look at it. uh, So if I was to leave my home right now and I was going to go to wherever you're at, right? There's, there's something I would not do. I would not type in the city. I wouldn't go. Okay. Uh, I want to go. I want. I don't know. You, and where are you at? Where's where's the, the city? You're I'm in, in Bethlehem, in. Georgia, honey. Bethlehem, Georgia. Georgia. I was actually gonna. I was gonna say Georgia of all places. I was, I was. I was close to it. So I'm not too far. You're close. Accent you're close. And warm, right? So I go. I'm not <laughs> what? Gonna, I have I, I accent. Go I, I didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit on there. Um, so a little bit. <laughs> if, I, if I was to go to Georgia, I wouldn't type in city, right? If I want to go to your specific space, your studio, I don't put the city in. Because if I just put the city, I go, I have no idea if she's going to be there. I'm not leaving the house. Correct. Right? But if I had the address, the precise location, I'm going to hit it in. It's going to give me that. Let's go. So a lot of people have this, this idea of like their goal is more of a city as composed to like a prepared, like a, a, an address, right? So when I, if I say I want to lose weight, I can't connect my brain palpably. To Agreed. It. I can't connect it to yes. emotional. So I don't want those subconscious drivings. Like think about when you want like the new pair of shoes or you want like the new bag, you know what the bag looks like, the color of it, what a few, you've the you name can, of so it, how much it costs. Yeah. Yeah. Your brain connects to it. But if you go, I want a new bag. It's like, I don't know what bag. So I'm not going to sacrifice for it, work for it. I don't even desire it that much. But if you know what it is, a precision, the brain connects. And so for me, I go, a lot of people, like you're saying, you can't just say, I want to lose weight. No, I want to lose 15 pounds because at 15 pounds or this inches, I can get to this dress. This is how I'll look. This is how I'll feel, right? Those are the connection points our brain doesn't get an opportunity to get if you don't clarify with clear intention what you want. Now, can this shift work for anybody? I mean, like, can anybody do this? Because a lot of people are going, well, you've, you're you so disciplined and you're so, you know, Anthony, you're so handsome and you're so charismatic. And, you know, of course it works for you, former NFL player. What do you say to just the average person out here, Yeah, you know, that's looking for a change? It only works for people that are people. Only works Come for on human with beings. it. It hurts everybody, man. Come on with it. <laughs> Every human being. Here's why. I was the kid who at six years old was, was very shut down. I didn't, no one, no one loved me to an extent. Like I was beaten by families and tortured and starved by families. Uh, I had to develop every part of me from being a guy that, that started way behind the line for most people. And the realistic point of it is the way that our psychology, our brains, our body, everything works is all based on little actions that you take. And so what's cool about it is absolutely any human being can create this for themselves. I had a client literally before this call. I'm not even making this up. It's, it's a serious. That's why I was smiled when you said that. She goes, I'm not as um, disciplined and consistent as you. And I go, well, unless you make the commitment to doing something to be disciplined too, you don't get to become Ooh. disciplined. Right. So that, that's all I did. I just, I said, here's the thing I want to do. Like for me, we're talking about a daily podcast. I do, I do a daily one, seven minutes and, and I'm consistent. I'm at 655 straight episodes. She goes, I'm, I'm not consistent and disciplined. I go, I don't think you get it. I'm not consistent and disciplined until I gave myself something to be consistent and disciplined towards. That makes so much sense. Right? And so everybody can get there. It's just a matter of what do you want to, to do. And it's the, it's the falling in love with the days to get there. At one point, I posted episode one. Now I'm at 655. I didn't do anything but just fall in love with posting every day and making a little statement and talking on the camera and that's it. And it flows into something else. I didn't, I didn't start this way. Nobody does. And you build into it. So that's actually, it should give people hope more than it gives them this feeling of like, I can't do it. Yeah. If you could, if you, if you start out by identifying with the outcome, me, if you identify with 655 episodes, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're never going to get started. Right. But if you identify with the efforts you'll get to the point of being at 655 one day and being the person that's consistent and disciplined and does it. And everybody look at you and go, it's magic. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just no, it's not. the thing yeah. I did. The way I explain it, and I'll, I'll stop talking so much is. No talk. That's why we're on here. 
We want you to talk to our people. I'm rambling. Right. I find that a lot of individuals, they identify with trying to go big. Like, I want to go big. And I go, right, 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 I don't right. want to go big. I go, what do you mean? I said, I want to go real small, but I want to go small in a really big way. Mm. If I can do that, I'll change the world. Oh, y'all, it's that time of year. Spring and summer is upon us. It's swimsuit season, and I don't know about you, but I am looking for ways to get healthy, look better, and feel better. And um, to be honest with you, I'm just too busy to cook. And with Factor, you get to skip the trip to the grocery store, skip the chopping, the prepping, the cleaning up too. Uh, Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. And y'all, they are super, super yummy. And when I say fresh, they are fresh. Fresh ingredients, um, easy preparation. Pop them in the microwave, heat them up for two minutes and you're done. All you have to do is heat and enjoy. And then you can get outside and soak up that summer weather. Um, Let me just say this too. If you're on a budget, okay, this month, by cutting back on takeout, you're going to save hundreds of dollars. Just get Factor instead. It's cheaper, it's easier, um, and it's faster than any restaurant or delivery or takeout. Chef prepared, dietitian approved, and just ready in two minutes. This spring, get Factor and enjoy clean eating without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy the fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door. Again, ready in two minutes. No prep, no mess. That's Factor. Head to factormeals.com slash Kim50 and use code Kim50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code Kim50 at factormeals.com slash Kim50 to get 50% off your first box. Enjoy, y'all. Doing all this in in the hustle culture, because the hustle culture I'm not into, it, it wore me out for years. When I stopped hustling and started being more purposeful with what I wanted to accomplish and be in my life, um, can hustle culture be a negative thing, you think? It can if it's if it's viewed improper. Here's the here's why. The hustle language I think ties to you pushing against the grain towards something that it doesn't light you up, right? There are things that I do that in me doing them, they are like effortless effort. I mean, it's easy for me to do. I love doing it, right? I I get you, man. I swear. And on the other side, that exact same thing for somebody else becomes this grit and grind. And so for me, I found that if if, if you take it all back and go hustle culture, no, people, you, you have to essentially work. Right. You have to work. But when you put the hustle on, it's like I'm getting down grit and grit. Yeah, there's a part of that. But if that at some point doesn't become a thing where you do it easily without even thinking about it, you you don't actually have the result. And if you do, you don't enjoy it and you eventually stop doing it. So when I look at the hustle culture, you have to decide what do I want to put my energy towards? And then what am I Mm -hmm. what am I going to look at years now to stop and go, do I love doing this? Because if you don't love doing it and you're still doing it, it's just as hard as day one. I would recommend not doing it, right? Because you're it's not helping you move something forward. But like for me with my podcast, I love doing my podcast. I'm at 655. I want to get to 6,000 one day, right? That's crazy because, you know, most people don't even get to 10. Average people don't even get to 10 episodes of any podcast. Yeah. And you're at 600. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. And crazy. I love doing it. That's the thing. So for me, it's not a hustle. From his thing, yeah. there's a, there are certain things in our lives that all of us love to do. People are like, how yes. my sister, my family, we're all very active. We're athletes. We do stuff. My sister goes, how in the hell do you guys go to a, a track and go do running? And, and that's your, that's your fun. And I go, oh, that's oh, what oh. we do. Right. For some people, the idea of that is crazy. I don't, I, they want to throw up at the idea of it. And we go, we can't wait to go do it. Right. It's all <laughs> right. perspective and what you find joy within. So yes, the hustle yes. culture can be negative if you still feel a year from now, like you're hustling. But if you've done the hustle and it's turned to effortless effort, it's a beautiful thing for you. I love that. Effortless effort. Okay. So, Anthony, you have to come back, one. But, two, I I close every podcast the same way with rapid-fire questions. Just rando questions. I'm going to ask you. um, Just first thing comes to your mind. Okay, here we go. Rapid-fire questions. If you could sit next to anyone on a plane, who would it be and why? Future me. I want to know if I did it right. Ooh, ooh. Future you. <laughs> I love that. Why do you, yeah. why, why would it be future you? <laughs> well, cause, cause everybody else is crazy, man. I don't know. You know why? I know Ain't my truth. I don't even know my wife's brain. Like my wife will say things. I'm like that, that, that came in your mouth just now. Right. So you can ask <laughs> questions of anybody, but I don't know the full framing. 
but future ant has experienced things and seen things and we can talk at a level of understanding. So I'd love to know right. what he thinks because I can actually trust his mind. Oh, I'm Anthony, where you're going to be in your future self, you need to hang on to your bootstraps, my friend, because you're going to take off in a big way. God's got big things. Okay, I'm going to go keep going. Um, if your house was on fire, what one thing would you grab out of it? Uh, is it people or, or objects? Anything. No, let's not say, let's just say okay. objects. People, that's, that's for sure. You got to grab people and pets. Yeah, I would take my laptop because my laptop is my life. That thing, it's it's. I'm just your laptop probably yesterday. has your whole life on it. Yeah, <laughs> my whole world's digital. I if, I, if, I, if my whole world, everything else right? can burn, but my laptop can go log in and buy it again. There you go. There you go. Okay, what is the best place you've ever visited? Ooh, I thoroughly enjoyed Costa Rica. It was a fun, like, rela- you could, like Ooh, wear flip flops, yes. no shirt, and just walk around sweaty. Like people there had never even seen our snow before. It was great to have conversations with them. Yeah, Costa Rica was awesome. Have you ever been to Turks and Caicos? I have. I've been there one time. It's beautiful. Uh, I like Turks. Oh, it's just I more of a touristy it. place. Whereas Costa Rica yeah, was just right. like Costa Rica is kind of like a yeah. It's like you're hanging out at their house. It's like you know, it's at their beach, and you're just there. I love it. Uh, what do you sp- What do you spend too much time thinking about? Ooh. Um, I don't want to say business because it's, it's kind of what it is, but I, I do spend time thinking about the people that I impact with my business. That makes sense. Mm, that's nice. So like what, what their questions are, the thoughts are, the, the things are consuming. Like, Cause I, I definitely want to make sure what I put into the world, they enjoy. So I probably spend mm. more than enough time <laughs> speaking and thinking about them. What is one thing you want to want to try that you have not yet? Ah, uh, what have I skydiving? My wife doesn't want me to die though, so she'll let me oh do it. Oh my gosh. Life. You're like the third <laughs> dude that has said skydiving. Did not ask that I've question. always wanted to. I'm, I might wait till my boys turn 18 and then rock with them and go like all three of us because I'm going to oh, get one I shot at it. I die. How old are your boys out of curiosity? The oldest is already 18. My twins, they're both 13. So I got like five more years till my, my yeah. youngest becomes of age to go jump out of a plane. We're both in the same throes of teenage boys. I love it. Um, if you could go back to the NFL tomorrow, Anthony, would you go? No. <laughs> you think about it. The NFL, what it did is it kept me away from my family because my family's in California. They, I was in Pennsylvania, right. right? So the lives were separate from my experience of it all. Um, two, it's, it's a situation where my body, like my physical body is not what it could be and should be because of that game. And then third. I've heard a lot of people I, say I, that. Yeah, and not that I'm against them. My body still feels pretty good, but there's little nagging things and knees and hamstrings and shoulders. It just all sucks, right? So the body, and it's funny, the brain part of it doesn't even bother me that much. My brain's pretty good. But I think the biggest part for me was the fact that I can make great money that makes my life amazing doing what I'm doing, but but I get to do it in a way where the world knows who I am. When you're behind a mm. helmet doing your thing, like, you think it's great. But the second you're done, like nobody cares who you are anymore. Yeah, It's just a weird world. So- yeah, I love I love playing the game. I still run around and play catching my son and do flag football stuff as a grown adult, you know, doing my old man thing. But to go back to the NFL, <laughs> it's a, it's a an, uh, we'll call it a career I don't aspire to have anymore. Yeah, that is not your identity. Um, okay, favorite junk food? Ooh, uh, Lay's classic potato chips. Oh, they're so oh. good, right? Yeah, just the, good the saltiness. Dang. And they're so super thin. The close second is, is the uh, the honey barbecue twist of the Frito ones. Those are the close seconds. Well, I haven't tried those. Oh, I'm going to have to go get me some oh, of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't get the right. ruffle. Like, the ruffle has its weird twisty. It's disgusting. It tastes okay, like so it's got to be Frito. <laughs> I love it. Listen, listen, I'm telling you, we could be close, like brother and sister talking about these snack foods. Okay, here we go. Who is your celebrity crush? Ooh, so it's, it, I think back in the day it was Jessica Alba. I don't know what it was, Jessica Alba. Okay, no, that's um, good. Oh, that's, that's a good, good one. That's right? good. She's that's a good one. Uh, but I think I think recently, I don't know, recently it changed. Um, it is uh Scarlett Johansson. She's a banger. She's pretty dope. You can't, you can't, you can't deny that. You can't oh, deny right. that. Those are two good ones. You got good taste. Okay. Um, last question. Best advice you have ever received. Ooh, it takes a little more to be a champion. That was it. Mm. It was uh Don Pelham, Don Papa, he's my, my college coach. But it was always this mentality of like, you're doing your thing and you reach the outskirts of your capabilities right now. And mm-hmm. the champions are the ones that reach that and they reach for more every That's single so day. True. It may mean one more rep, one more hour, one more film set, whatever it is. He says, 
but that little more, cause you can't, you don't know what your competition's doing, but if they aren't doing a little bit more and you are inevitably you right. will outpace them. So you'll, you'll keep on moving when you reach their level and go beyond. So whether it's a champion in your marriage, a champion in your health, a champion as a parent, it's that little bit more that you don't want to do or feel comfortable doing. You just force yourself to do it and you step and level yourself up in time. Uh, I got to tell you, Anthony, there's so much more coming for you. You are going to be a massive thought leader in this world. Uh, your story, your confidence, your your content, everything about it is just so good. Just be blessed and just know God's got huge, huge things for you. I mean, I don't I know if you even want to hear that, but uh, trust me, as I've, I, as a woman who's been around a block a time or two, it's fresh, dude. Very fresh. Thank you. I appreciate it. I Very appreciate fresh. It. I, all right. I'll you got to come back and be on. Count me in anytime. Let me know. All right. All right. Y'all check Anthony out everywhere uh, on social media. Anthony, it's Anthony Trucks, right? All Shucks. Yep. Anthony Trucks. yep. All Shift all is the sh- podcast. All Anthony Shift. Anthony the name. Yeah. Check it out. We're going to put all that here. But I'm telling you right now, Anthony, you're one of my new favorite people out there. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you're you. You're bringing Thanks. the heat. I love it. All right. We'll see you soon. Right, Zach? What does that tell you? Right? I'm super impressed with Anthony. Like, yeah, I love him. <sighs> He's one of my new favorite people. Everything he said resonated with me. Every single me thing he said. And started making me think about my own life. And I know if I'm thinking, if I'm sitting here thinking about myself, and right. I'm like, oh, wait, I'm on the podcast. Uh-oh, I have to like, you know, that's, <laughs> you know, that's I'm a actually good thing. like working. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm working well, right now. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I, I'm not just watching TV. I, you know, I get into a boat where I'm like, oh, I'm just watching TV, but I'm yeah. not. <laughs> but I love how, I mean, his story is so amazing. And how, I mean, can you imagine being in foster care at three years old and finally adopted at 14 and all the things he had to endure? And it could have gone south. It could have really gone mm-hmm. in a bad direction. But Anthony has chosen to create the life he has. And I love how he says, if I can do it, you can do it too. Basically, it's just making a decision and doing it in those small steps, you know, just that one bit of effort at a time. He's dead on about everything he's saying, big things for him. Y'all go check out his podcast um, and, and connect with Anthony. Even if you need a little encouragement or a little direction or a little coaching, he is there. Um, and just remember, you know, that shift, that identity shift in, in really seeing who God created you to be. That is the most important thing. His website is anthonytrucks.com. His social media is um, at Anthony Trucks on social media. And listen to the podcast, Ah Shift Podcast. Um, check him out. He's one of my new favorite people. All right, y'all. Make sure you tell everybody about the Kim Gravel Show. We've always got interesting guests and fun things to talk about. And we're always here to help you level up your life. Till next time, we love you. Bye. We nailed today. We did. We got it. If I do say so myself. Well, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Okay, don't say that. We're almost there. (laughs) Look, I'm a big proponent of not jinxing things, okay? I swear, are you in Travis? Don't you? No, I I believe. Yes! As soon as I say the thing is good, that's when your camera cuts out or the ghost comes okay, back. Well, shut up! Don't say all that. Again. Just start the music. 